All right, let's get you some visuals now that we're getting from China of the Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar. Let's listen in. In the coming months, we would be organizing several other events in areas like museum management, education, think tank forum, and cooperation in the areas of film and broadcasting, reflecting the wide range of our cultural and societal exchanges. Some suggestions were also made uh, today by the Chinese side uh, to expand the Kailash Mansarovar Yatra, and we are deeply appreciative of those initiatives. The success of this mechanism can also be gauged from the fact that we have just now concluded four MOUs agreements, uh, which include one, promoting uh, cultural exchanges for the preservation of intangible cultural heritage, organization of cultural activities, and management of archaeological heritage sites. Two, uh, enhance cooperation in the field of traditional medicine, where both countries have a rich knowledge accumulated over centuries with the objective of promoting the development of traditional medicine in the healthcare systems of the two countries. Three, promote exchanges between our national sports association, sports persons, and youth for strengthening cooperation on international sports events. And four, cooperation in museum management for promoting collaboration between the Hubei Provincial Museum, Wuhan, and the National Museum, New Delhi, in the field of exhibitions, protection and restoration of collections, and archaeological excavations for museums. Separately, mm -hmm. our two foreign ministries have also agreed on a plan of action for bilateral engagements for the year 2020 with the foreign minister and I just signed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Media Forum is an important event of the second meeting of the high-level mechanism on cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. Media today plays a critical role in shaping public opinion. With the rapid advances in technology and its widespread usage, this role has become even more important. The Media Forum provides a very good platform to discuss and explore ways on how our respective media can contribute towards the objective of a closer developmental partnership between our two countries by enhancing appreciation and understanding of each other's standpoint and core interests. Regular exchanges of media persons and institutionalized cooperation among our media houses could be a good step forward. Such exchanges are especially important because both our countries have each their own system of governance. Another area to look at would be to examine further the role and impact of social media. I strongly believe that this exercise in exchange of ideas among opinion makers in the media fraternity will go a long way in building on the achievements of the previous three editions <clears throat> of the Media Forum and contribute to a stronger India-China media relationship. I hope that you have all availed this opportunity to have a frank and meaningful discussion with your counterparts for promoting greater friendship and cooperation between the media of two countries and in the process contribute to the overall development of our bilateral relations. I'm confident that the forum was a big success. Uh, and once again, I thank our host for all the arrangements for what has been uh, today a very productive and uh, successful day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Foreign Minister. Now I have the honor to invite State Councillor Wang Yi to deliver his remarks. Friends from the media, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to meet with you together with Minister Jashanka. Minister Jashanka had served as Indian ambassador to China for many years, making positive and active contribution to China-India relations. This is his first visit to China after he took office as the foreign minister. Welcome, Excellency. This morning, Mr. Minister and I held official talks during which we had an in-depth exchange of views on bilateral relations and international and regional issues of shared interest. We are of the view that as the two major developing countries and emerging economies with uh, over 
one billion people each. Observance to the five principles of a peaceful coexistence, friendly relations between China and India fully serve the uh, fundamental long-term interest of both countries and both peoples. It also will make our further contribution to world peace and human progress. We are of the view that guidance provided by our leaders is the most important guarantee for the growth of China-India relations, the most p important political guarantee. It is especially important to maintain high-level engagement momentum, in particular make good preparations for the second informal summit to ensure that China-India relations will continue to move forward along the right direction. We are of the view that to ensure the success of this high-level mechanism on people-to-people people and cultural exchanges, the strategic economic dialogue, financial dialogue, and other important institutionalized dialogues are very important. We need to strengthen our cooperation mechanisms, including more defense exchanges, so that we can build more practical results. We are of the view that we need to further deepen our practical economic and trade cooperation. China appreciates India's concerns over trade imbalances, and we stand ready to continue to provide facilities to Indian exports to China. At the same time, we need to think more broadly and expand cooperation in investment, industrial production, tourism, border trade, and other areas so that we can achieve overall balance in our economic and trade relations. We are of the view that we need to abide by the UN Charter, respect sovereignty and territory integrity of all countries, and to properly address relevant disputes through dialogue. We will continue to utilize the special representative mechanism over the boundary question to seek early harvest in the boundary negotiation, the CBMs at the border areas, and related cooperation to maintain peace and tr tranquility in the border areas and to finally find a fair and proper solution to the boundary question. We are of the view that it is important to strengthen coordination and, co and cooperation on hotspot international and regional issues. In particular, we need to build consensus among developing countries, safeguard the uh, status of China and India as developing countries and the development right that we enjoy within the WTO and the legitimate rights and interest in that regard. We need to firmly push back unilateralism, protectionism and bullism with concrete actions and firmly uphold the purpose and principles of the UN Charter and the basic norms governing international relations. Well, there are some differences between our two countries. We don't shy away from those differences. We exchanged views on those matters in a candid manner. Regarding the recent tensions between India and Pakistan, we uh, made clear China's concerns on the issues that regarding involving China's sovereignty and rights and interest. We also stated China's principled position. This afternoon, together with Minister Jashanka, we co-chaired the second meeting of the high-level mechanism on people-to-people -people exchange. This mechanism was established as part of an agreement, an important agreement reached by President Xi and Prime Minister Modi. It is a creative step to show up popular support. Leading officials from over a dozen departments and ministries attended the meeting, and together we reviewed the progress made since the first meeting in this particular area, and we explored together the future plans for cooperation. And let me summarize our discussion into five consensus. First, we both believe that to strengthen people-to-people -people exchanges, it is important to be result-oriented and build common understanding. Through the effective mechanism, we can carry forward our traditional friendship to the general public and translate the leaders' consensus into real action and strengthen the momentum of people-to-people -people exchange so that we can have sustained driving force for China-India relations. Second, we both believe that to strengthen people-to-people -people exchanges, we need to be inclusive and build common ground while minimizing differences. Internationally,
we join, that our two civilizations ex coexist in harmony with mutual respect, and we jointly drive progress in Asia and for humanity. Third, we both believe that we need to have careful design and